Good morning. Now it's uh, Sunday, right? It is. Yeah, it's Sunday. And uh, we're here with uh, Brother Brian. We slept at his house and uh, my alarm clock didn't work. I don't know what's up with that. So I woke up uh, like uh, just uh, a short while ago. And um, now we're on our way to a radio station. Radio shop, yep. Yeah. And uh, we have five minutes. So uh, we, we're gonna see what they ask and uh, we're gonna do our best to answer in a very uh, evangelistical, evangelical, I don't know, my English is not that, that good early in the morning, but in a way that uh, would uh, uh, make people interested in uh, Jesus because Oh, everybody needs Jesus. I need Jesus. Brian needs Jesus. John needs Jesus. And uh, if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you need Jesus. And uh, you will never regret that you, you accepted him because he will change your life. And you will find peace. And he will give you what you need. Uh, I'm not saying that love is going to... Life... It's going to be easy, but uh, you're going to have a lot of love because uh, God is love. And uh, then, finally, one day when you die, you're not going to die. Because the Bible says that we shall, be, we shall live even if we die because we have eternal life in Christ Jesus. And uh, we go to heaven. Those who believe in Jesus go to heaven and heaven is a good place because there we can eat a lot without gaining any weight. And now we're going to go to the radio show. Amen. Amen. And tonight we're in Pontesbury. 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 Yeah, Pontesbury tonight, yeah. What's the name of the church? It's the um, Congregational Church, Main Road, Pontesbury. Mm. There you go. Here we go. <coughs> Status quo. I'm rocking all over the world at BBC Radio Shropshire, which, which kind of leads nicely to the man you're about to meet now. It's rather an extraordinary man. He's a biker. He's previously played on stage with the likes of White Snake. Uh, he's battled with drink and drugs and now speaks to people about how he found faith. Pontus J. Back joins me in the studio on, on a flying visit through Shropshire, visiting a few churches in the area this weekend. Good morning to you, Pontus. Good morning. Let, let's start at the very beginning. Uh, you, you've got quite a, a long and complicated history. I mentioned there with alcohol and drugs, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, how, how did that come about for you? Uh, when I... Uh, I started drinking at a very young age because uh, I was uh, my mother gave me away when I was a little child and I actually I came to a good home with a good mom and dad and, and had a very wonderful upbringing but uh, still I didn't know who I was and uh, I didn't know where I was going so uh, I found peace in the bottle at about 12 years old and that's when, when it all started and, and uh, it was no real peace. It was just like hiding the, those problems. I mentioned the rock and roll lifestyle. Uh, presumably, that that didn't help with that with that addiction that you already had. It didn't help at all. But uh, I can't blame the music. I can't blame my friends. I can't blame anyone than my myself because I was the one drinking. I was the one us using the drugs and uh, and uh, yeah. But but. You clearly enjoyed your, your time on the road with, with those bands. Yes and no. It was it was hard hard time because uh, I had to drink all the time. I was drinking three big bottles of vodka every day, and I was basically drinking from uh, 20, 24 seven. And uh, uh, I was I was a mess. I was scared. I was uh, scared of dying every day. We had a person on the road and on staff with us. He, his job was to tell me that I'm not going to die when I thought I was going to die. And this whole, whole things came from like my early childhood. So, uh, 
and uh, my body got used to that alcohol, so I had to drink more and more and more. And uh, so uh, we had some good times, and the the, the bands they were uh, wonderful people. All the people I played with, I just explain. Talk about some of the bands that you played with. It started. I I, um, I met Mickey Moody, who used to who was an original lineup of White Snake in 1995, and uh, started to work work with him in uh, in Finland and Sweden, uh, and we became good friends. And then uh, I uh, worked with some uh, members from uh, the original lineup of uh, Co, and uh, then I moved over to to work with some American guys. Uh, we had a band named Skinny Molly. I formed that with. Uh, with my guests who used to be in Leonard Skinner, and uh, we had Dave Lubeck who formed Molly Hatchet, so that's the way we were called Skinny Molly, and uh, and uh, yeah, so but they were like all nice people, and uh, when I, when I uh, tried to stop drinking, they all supported me, but uh, I could never make it on my own. So it, it, it was faith that that finally got to you and made you change your your lifestyle. Really, what what happened? Uh, because I was drinking so much, I ended up at the hospital. I was uh, all yellow. I uh, my my kidneys didn't work anymore. My liver was uh, like Swiss cheese. I had several bleeding ulcers. My pancreas was inflamed. I had two gallons of fluid in my, in my stomach that uh, started to come through the skin of my stomach. So it was really itching and really really painful, uh, slow death. And uh, the doctors they gave me no hope. But before that, I, I had a friend who told me about Jesus, and I always thought he was nuts. Like, uh, Jesus, yeah, yeah, right. But um, I accepted Jesus Christ, I gave Jesus a try, and uh, I said, if you're real, help me. And uh, I didn't feel anything right then when I said the prayer, but uh, he, he sure helped me. And uh, on my deathbed, uh, people, they laid hands hands on me and they prayed, as the Bible says, that we, we lay hands on people and we pray and they shall get, get uh, healed. And uh, one night I met Jesus. He, he came to my deathbed and he told me that when I get up from that bed, I shall go out and tell all the people about him, about my life, and uh, tell all the young people about the dangers and help other people with the same problems. And, that's what I've been doing for the last six years, and these six years has been the best years of my life. So, so that's that's why you're here at the moment, isn't it? Because you're you're sharing your story. And last night you were at Barnabas Church in Shrewsbury. So, so how did that go? It was good. It was good because uh, uh, it's nothing I do in my own strength. It's I'm totally dependent on, on God to show up every night because He's everywhere. And uh, there's, it's sad that so many people think that church and uh, and to have a relationship with God is boring, but it's not boring at all. It's it's uh, it's very exciting because you never know what God's going to do, and He's a loving God, and it's also a lot of power. So He healed me in uh, our ministry. We pray for people. We see people get healed. We see people get up out of wheelchairs. Blind blind people start to see, and and uh, I don't understand people who come to the meetings. They see this with their own eyes, but they still still don't believe in Jesus, so I don't know what, what their problem is. If, if you haven't found your faith, where, where do you think you would be now? Dead. Do you, you, you believe that? Yeah, I would, I would, I would, yeah. I would be in hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, no doubt about it. So you're sharing your story tonight in Pontsbury, aren't you? Yes. And it, can anyone pop along? And anyone can pop along and, uh, and uh, yeah, Every, everyone is welcome and, uh, and uh, people can come as they are. There's like, uh, Jesus doesn't point fingers at people. He doesn't judge people because the way they look like you. Do I do you think I look like a Christian? Um, I'll, uh, you know, you look like a biker. Because yes. you, you, biking's played a big part in your life. You know, you've got tattoos on your arm, you, you've got the beard, you've got the leathers on. Yeah. Clearly, yeah? But uh, people think that uh, a Christian has to look a certain way, but uh, if you go to the to the Bible, look at the people that Jesus handpicked, the disciples. They were probably would have been bikers today. Mm -hmm. Could be anyone. Yeah. Pontus, it, it's fascinating talking to you. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. Uh, Pon 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 so. Pontus J. Bag is going to be talking about his life and faith at Pontsbury Congregational Church this evening. And as he says, at 7 o'clock tonight, anyone can pop along. Okay.
Your Sunday morning challenge on the treasure quest is about to get underway. Clue number one will be revealed after this from Leonard Skinner. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. So now we have been to the radio station and uh, it was five minutes, it was a little bit short. It was a bit longer than five minutes. It was longer than five minutes. Yes. Yeah, was it? Than five minutes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I timed it. I think it was about seven minutes, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Mm. Where can people listen to that? If you go on to the BBC website, you can then go on to uh, Radio Shropshire and you can get it on iPlayer for seven days after nine o'clock this morning. Um, so you can do it anywhere around the world. So uh, you go to BBC? BBC, just BBC website. Website and then you go to Radio Shropshire. Radio Shropshire. Shropshire and that's. Uh, and then you get the program. S H R O P S H I R E, like that. Shropshire. Right. How you doing? Okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay, thank you. So there you can listen to what was said and what was not said. Amen. Now we're in the car again and uh, we have been uh, at uh, Brian and Helen's place. They're taking mm. really good care of us, wonderful people. Yeah. And um, we did uh, BBC radio this morning and uh, I think it was good, yeah? But a lot of very positive feedback. It's good, mm. but we want to see people saved. Yeah, not, not, we don't need the... Uh, uh, Christians uh, clap our shoulders. Absolutely. We need encouragement, but but I mean that's not why we do this. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, then we went to this church uh, and uh, listened to the pastor who was preaching. He uh, explained things in the Bible, and it was good. The worship team was good, and uh, it's a nice church. They mm. do a lot of good things, as I could tell. It's a good church, and I hope to visit them again. That's where we the Barnabas Church, where we were last night. And now we're gonna go to my city or my village, Pontesbury. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And w w what's gonna happen there tonight? Well, I think we're gonna start off. Uh, there's gonna be, uh, we think, about 50 people there. And uh, they're older people. Yeah. And we we're hoping that they're going to be bringing friends and relatives that aren't saved. And uh, we're going to give them the opportunity of singing a hymn and then it's over to Pontus to do his stuff. And then uh, after that we see what happens and then we're gonna drive to Warrington. Warrington. We take a different road today. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, la yesterday was quite a long drive. But it, it was... Uh, but it was nice scenery. The, the reason we went the long way around is because there was a big football match on and there was lots of traffic congestion. Yeah. So, although we went the long way around, it was quicker. Yeah. So, uh, in England, they, uh, really, they're really into football. And I don't really get it, but uh, God bless them. And, uh, yeah, now we're on our way to church. And uh, it's Sunday, and uh, we're blessed. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Um, just to give you a bit, I'm just going to introduce Pontus to you. Uh, two years ago, uh, myself and uh, others, we went to uh, the European uh, Christian Motorcyclist uh, Gathering, which was in Forchheim in uh, East Germany. And we had an amazing time, and this is where we met Pontus. And his message was so strong that we said, we've got to get him over here. It was absolutely amazing, and we were fortunate that he accepted our invitation to come over at Easter. And he was over for 10 days, and we went into different prisons, we went to youth, we went, we worked him really hard in uh, the 10 days, I think we did, how many uh, meetings did we do? Six days. Oh, sorry, six days, we did 11 meetings. And in that time, we saw in excess of 50 people give their lives to the Lord. Now, the thing is, we're called to make disciples, aren't we? Not converts. And because of our ministry, we are in a position to disciple those people. Uh, obviously, we've got contacts in the prisons, etc. 
and I didn't think that Pontus would um, accept our invitation to come a second time. He's such a busy man, he's so sought after because of the strength of his message. However, he's actually decided, obviously, he's here now, he's accepted our uh, invitation. And um, can I just read, read something? I hope you don't mind the King James, is that okay? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, right. It's, it's, it's 1 Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And of course, this is a man of word, a man of power. And uh, if it's okay, brother, I'll hand over the evening to you. We can't, we can never know what God wants to do a night like this. And uh, so many times I see it that we want to make uh, programs and uh, have control, but uh, we need to let God have the control because He is the control, He is in control. So uh, I would like for you to read uh, the first verses of Psalm 40. You have the proper English. I speak with a funny accent because I'm from Finland. So I'm, uh, that means I'm Finnish, but I'm not finished. <laughs> so I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. God, he put a song in my mouth some uh, years ago. It's okay there. Yeah, make sure it's still okay. This song is uh, it's called Thankful and uh, after I share my life story tonight i uh, hope you realize why i'm thankful but i want to start off with this song because it relates to the scripture and uh, because jesus is saying yesterday today and forever he still puts songs in our mouths and i believe before a song comes out of our mouth something happens in our heart and uh, this song is called thankful <laughs> sitting on a cloud looking down at us and and uh, I, I should say I had some kind of faith that I received as a child because I went to Sunday school and uh, then confirmation 
we uh, we had to study the Bible, but I remember we studied more about what Martin Luther came up with than uh, the Word of God. And we have to learn stuff, we have to know, but it, it still, it never came from my heart. It was just like like you you learn things, how to say you, it, it's, it's from your mind, not from your heart. And, uh, but the priest, he was, a, he was a funny man and, and, uh, and uh, coming up from that, that uh, he was very strict, those Christians in Finland, they were really like, like, uh, how should I say, religious. They, uh, you had to do like this and you had to do like that. If you did like that, you were gonna end up in hell and you're not allowed to do that and you're not allowed to do that and you're not allowed to look like me. So, uh, but uh, that priest during the confirmation camp, he won my heart by letting me smoke cigarettes during there because he knew I smoked and those who smoked, they needed to have their parents sign the paper. And uh, I didn't get my paper, but he said, I know you smoke, so you go, you go ahead. And that's like, he became a friend. So, uh, so uh, I remember that man and uh, he, I, I'm sure he imparted a seed in me by being an understanding man. Like a good friend, even if he was way older than me, we, we talked about things and he, he, was, uh, he was caring. He asked, uh, how, how are you today? And, and I remember one day he said, Pontus, uh, you're gonna become a priest or a missionary. And that, that's when, when I lost it. I didn't wanna hear that because that was not what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a rock star. And if you want to be a rock star at the age of 15, and somebody tells you you're going to become a priest, <laughs> you don't want to hear that. <laughs> so, but here I am today. And I know he's, he's, uh, he's having a good time. He's laughing today. He's, he's at home with Jesus. He, he sure was a man of God. And uh, he married me and my wife. We, I met, met, uh, met my wife. Uh, I was 18 years old. And uh, we... Everything went so quick. It was uh, my first real love and uh, her first real love, so we moved together. And obviously we were living in sin. We didn't know it then because nobody told us. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, if we met any Christians, oh, you live together and you're not married. That, that's a typical thing today, how, how they <laughs> approach those who don't believe. And how do they react? If somebody would have come and told me Back then, I didn't believe in God. I didn't want to have anything to do with Jesus. And uh, I just wanted to be a rock star. I wanted to live my life. I love my girlfriend. We moved together. We were planning to get married and all this. And somebody is going to come and tell me it's not okay. And then they're going to tell me because God's lo God loves you. It's, it's a, a double message. Because I believe, first of all, we need to realize that God is real and why we need God. And again, we need God, but first we need Jesus because we can't get to God before we get Jesus. And this was not preached or taught in the schools or in the churches. And I know today it's not even preached. It's, we, we have, many churches have gone far away from the original gospel, from, from like a simple gospel that a child can understand. I'm not smart at all, but uh, if, if somebody tells me something in a very simple way, the simple gospel when it's preached and we speak about Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. We all know that. But so many people, they, they, uh, they try to, to hide Jesus and just speak about a higher power. I, I know in that in Finland and Sweden, for example, AA, he started out of the churches and it was based on the Bible. It was based on the word of God. What it is today, we pray to a higher power. What's that higher power? It can be anything. It can be a demonic, it can be satanic. But if we pray to Jesus and we pray in Jesus name, that can only be good because there's only one Jesus. We, and, and by praying in Jesus name, we walk into what he already did. To pray to a higher power, there's, there's probably many higher powers, but not one that is as high as Jesus. What I see today in the body of Christ, 
I don't think God is so pleased. We backstab each other, we judge and we condemn. And even if the Bible says in, in Romans 8, 1, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ, we still condemn and judge each other. When Jesus told us to do something else, what did he tell us to do? Love one Amen. Amen. I'm going to be honest tonight because I, I, I'm not a guy I, that uh, go around and tell stories. I, I, I try to, to tell what, what's on my heart right now. And right now I feel that it's, it's time to, to everybody can do their part and step deeper into that love and start to love on people. Start to love on other Christians. There are Christians around you that need you. And how do you know how they feel if you don't? Ask them, how are you today? Like, in Finland we are really boring people. Like, that's why I love to travel. We don't speak to other people. We go walk like this and... Like in the elevator, if I fart, I'm the only one laughing. But if I go to America, it starts a whole conversation and uh, we're having a great time and they, they ask, oh, where are you from? I'm from Finland. I mean, I'm human. We're all human. And we have to care. We, we're allowed to have fun. It's not about... And imagine some of the churches when I show up. I look like this. There was one Pentecostal lady who said, Oh, it's the devil. I said, No, my name is Pontus. Nice to meet you, lady. Imagine if we started to look at people with Jesus' eyes. Because let me tell you how he looks at you, how God looks at you. When God the Father looks at you, who does he see? This is Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try to hide my, hide my issues, but I also I'm not going to preach anything that I don't live. Mm. So many preachers, there, they preach a message, how to live. Yeah, I get up five o'clock in the morning. I spend six hours on the floor speaking in tongues. Yeah, God bless you, brother. <laughs> I don't do that. I, I, uh, I know I could pray more. But all my life I have had concentration problems, I need to be on the move. We're all different. Because somebody maybe want to spend an hour or two in prayer, that's good. That's his calling and uh, his personality. I might sit on my motorcycle or in my car driving four or five hours, speak to God, and it, it literally feels like he's sitting in the passenger seat with me. And. Uh, I want my coffee first before I pray. Some people want to pray first before they uh, drink their coffee. We're all different. But I recognize that what we do, we look at what separates us. Mm, yeah. Why don't we look at him who connects us? Because Jesus is connecting his people and it's time for the body of Christ to be one. John 17, 20 something to something else says that Jesus is still praying. It says that his praying or his prayer was, it's not was, it's present because Jesus is saying yesterday, today and forever. And right now he's praying. And I wonder like when he looks down at us, I, I don't believe he's up like far away. He's right here and he, he sees us. We don't see him like, like he sees us. Sometimes I think he, he, he's frustrated, not, not frustrated, but, but uh, the good thing to know is he, that he can't give up. Yeah. He never gives up. Yeah. But if, if I was Jesus and I was looking at, at those Christians and uh, that prayer that uh, you shall be one as me and the Father are one, mm. I, I, I would probably give up because it would look like a hopeless case. <laughs> but for God, there's no hopeless case. Praise God, I'm back in my room and uh, it's nice and clean and uh, I'm going to go to bed now, been a good weekend, a busy weekend and uh, 
tomorrow night. Uh, next meeting is tomorrow night, yeah. And uh, I'm going to speak to a bunch of unsaved young people and uh, looking forward to that because uh, basically I've been speaking to saved people. We had one who came tonight and uh, it was all for him and uh, that one soul is what matters. So, uh, but I'm looking forward to speak to the youth tomorrow and I would like to thank Brian and Helen for for uh, their hospitality, their love, their fellowship and uh, Brother John for taking such good care of me. Like I'm a blessed man to be able to do this and without these people I wouldn't be able to do it and uh, I wouldn't be able to do anything without Jesus and I would like to thank you all for all your prayers and your support. So good night and God bless. Hold your life in here.